Isn't that pretty? We're gonna go see the garden and I need to plant some more things. Mostly just another zucchini, so let's get the supplies. This one. I'm gonna plant another of those. So you can see my blue shelling snow pea is pretty much really all dried up. I just need to come out and actually shell them. See the green on the inside? So I just need to break them all up now and put these into little clip lock baggies so that they don't get any moisture onto them. And then they're safe to plant more next year. I've got my tomatoes here. So you'll notice at the top, I've actually topped the top of my tomatoes. So topping your tomatoes means that you have pinched off the growing tip so that this, mean, this means that it won't grow any higher than this. And it tells the plant, um, it sort of forces it to put in its energy down here. So on all the fruit that it's producing. So this, this one here is growing up two main stems. And so I've done the same to this one over here as well. So I've pinched the top off it so that all of the rest of it can concentrate on setting fruit. And I've done the same with this one over here. So I've pinched the top of it there. This one, can you see how droopy it is? I watered yesterday, but I need to water again. Um, I'll probably do that in the morning or tonight if I have enough time. See this one, I haven't actually topped the last little bit because I wanted this to just grow a little bit more so I could attach it to um, the rest of the post. And then I will top that as well. And it will mean that it'll focus on setting the rest of its fruit and growing these. This is a Dr. Witchy's one. I don't know if you can see in there, it looks like it got a little bit attacked by I've had like a webworm burrow in there and it burrows like into the fruit. So you gotta watch out for that. I managed to get him out with one of my little plant labels. I just scooped him out. You can see all the other ones here. Actually, that was the one. That was the one there. It's deeper in there. But um, maybe, <laughs> maybe I need to check the other one and make sure there's not one in there. Maybe that's just what it looks like. You can usually see um, it's called a webworm because it'll have like kind of spider webbery sort of stuff around it. It was, it was quite noticeable when it was there. But you can see here I've got some of them covered up because we get fruit fly up here and I've noticed some recently. Um, and I've got a, a eco trap that is, that catches and kills the male fruit flies. Um, but for some of the others, I'm putting this, these bags around them to try and protect them because um, I don't have many more of these seeds left. So I at least want to save the seeds from some, um, but then I also do want to eat them. So see, check this one out, if I can show you. It's a really bad angle. That's a, that a fused blossom. See, it's got, it's like two tomatoes growing together. And then I've got the pansies looking a lot better now. My two mulbies, the little Jarvis gem. The nasturtium, it's really drying, drying off and dying off. It's just been dropping a lot of its seeds everywhere. Just haven't done anything with it yet. And not forget these. These are my seed starts, which these are um, capsicums. I do need to tr to up pot them really. That's my fault of just being lazy. These tomatoes didn't really work, um, but I need to up pot these because they just don't have enough food to keep growing. So I need to deal with that. Oh, it's so nice today. It's, um, I think it was 29 degrees today, which is really good. Like a couple of days ago, it was only on top of 19. Well, that's a big difference. Mmm, mulberries are a lot better. Well, I think they're better and they taste better when they're not warm, but just not cold out of the fridge. Not that you can get mulberries. Um, from the supermarket, or the ones that I go to anyway. But they're ripening really quickly now. Mmm. Really yum. 
So Melby is looking really good. Nice and green. It's actually got a lot of spiders and bugs on it. It's like lady, lady beetles and everything. And there's Figgy. She's doing good. She's getting new growth on here because the figs grow mostly on the new growth, I think, from what I remember from last year. So I need these green tips to grow longer and that's what the, where the figs will come from. And the sweet potato is nearly escaping out of the pot, so it's getting bigger. The little wild tomato. Look at this. It's like bending here, but it's growing all the way over here. So it's, look at it, like look at all the fruit it's setting. Like, it's healthy over here. It's just up there that's all sick. But see like, by the time it gets to ripening, it's getting to the sick part. That's all right. See how you go. I probably should support it a little bit. Let's start in the new garden. Look at that pretty sunset. So have a look at all the potatoes. Can you see this though? Something's been eating the potato leaves. I haven't worked out yet what it is. Oh, there is a stink bug there. I wonder if it could be a stink bug. I don't reckon you'll be able to see it on here. That thing moving. Stink bug. Ah, go away. So I'll have to have a closer look at that. This is a really wilted leaf. Oh my gosh. I wonder if does anybody know what they are? Look at them. I think they might be it, or at least they, I'm taking, I'm taking it to somewhere, ah, I'm taking it somewhere so I can stand on them. <laughs> I don't know what they were, but it made that one potato leaf really droopy. So I was just wondering if maybe that is what is starting to make it sad. Oh my gosh, look at all of these wilted leaves. I don't know, it could be just because it needs a drink. It was really strange to find all those bugs under it. It was hot today, so it could be that. Just have to keep an eye on it. But otherwise they're looking pretty good. Down here, some of the zinnias, they're getting bigger. And the next potato patch, so these are the King Edward ones. The like, tops of them are a little bit sunburnt. And here's some of the cucumbers. They're the bush Lebanese cucumbers and some dill. <laughs> I haven't filled it, thin, filled. I haven't thinned out the dill yet. And look, there's grass coming through. I'll just pull a couple up. Dill plants get really big. I just don't want to pull all of them out. There we go. I think I've left two. So that's, oh no, I've left three. So that's essentially what thinning out is, is like getting rid of the ones that you don't want. I'll take that one out as well. Now there's just two there. Here is the sunflowers there, the black Russian sunflowers. Like, look how massive they are. You don't usually plant them this close together because um, it can make them smaller, each of the plants smaller, but um, I don't mind. I'm just going to see what it looks like. And over here is the blue jade corn. It's now like a foot tall, kind of ish. It only gets four feet tall. And it's got this beautiful, like, purpley blue tinge on it, which is really neat. One, two, three, four, five rows are there. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'm right. And then the tomatoes at the back. I do need to tie them up again because they're growing nice and fast. Down at the base, there's some basil, sweet basil, purple basil. There's one there, it's hard to see. This is supposed to be Tulsi, which is another kind of basil, but I haven't seen any pop up yet. Another chunk of sweet basil, purple basil, no Tulsi, and sweet basil again. I haven't topped any of these tomatoes because obviously they're still growing and they have this trellis to grow up. They do look a little bit wilty and stressed, so I will have to water them. Um, but see, some of these I need to tie up and give a bit of support to, like this one here. Um, but once they do get quite high up here, I will top them 
so that I can concentrate on the fruit. I've been having some issues with fruit set and a lot of blossoms falling off. I don't know exactly why. See? I don't know what it is exactly. They've been doing like really good, but just not actually like setting the fruit. There's like some, it's been there. Like, look how many blossoms there are. Well, this one's doing okay. It's two, three, four. But for like how many blossoms there were, I was expecting to have a lot, a lot more. There's some in there. That's cool to see. I've decided I do really like growing just on a single stem. This one looks like one of the healthiest plants I've got along here. And it's the only single stem apart from the smaller ones. That They're just smaller because I planted them later. They're mostly all the same varieties as these ones. Let's see from the other side if it's any better. Yeah, can you see all of those blossoms? They're just not lots of fruit. This one's also the best one at setting fruit, but this is the one that has weird fruit. This is supposed to be Dr. Witchy's, which is supposed to look kind of like that weird heirloomy, bumpy one. And like those ones on the plants back up on the patio. Um, but it has these like pretty smooth fruits but then also the weird bumpy ones. And it was Dr. Witchy's seeds. So I've got a cross or something, which is pretty neat. Even this little one has like a big one. You go, you go you. And see this, it's got, it's tricky to see, but it's split there. So I didn't keep close enough eye on it and it split into two. And so I have um, topped that one already. A little bit there we can see I topped it there and so the rest of the growth will come from this other one because so I just like it focusing on one and two. Oh look this is a great example so see this this plant's growing up here and see this bit coming out that's uh that's a sucker and up here is the rest of the plant so usually you pinch out that if you just want it to grow on one stem which I'm gonna do like that. Then you just have this beautiful bit of tomato leaf to smell. Oh, it smells so good. Let's pinch out any of the other suckers. And then you'll make sure you have it on one long stem. Just make sure you don't pinch it off the top one because then that's as big as the plant's gonna get. I'm trying to do it slightly quickly, our tour today, because we're running out of light. But here's the rest of the garden. I'll show you some of the other tomatoes. So this one here, I, did I top it? I did, I topped this one. This is, uh, look at that funky one. That was several, several blossoms. It looks like a, <laughs> looks like a caterpillar or something. And it's got some more fruit down here. This is a triple crop tomato. See loads of blossoms. And look at that big one under there. Wow, it gets really big so quick. Um, I don't think I had topped this other side. Oh, I have, yep, great. So I was gonna say if I hadn't, I'll do it now. So I pinched it out there. So this one is topped. So all of the fruit and the blossoms are gonna um, be getting the energy that was going into growing it taller. This one here is my favorite one. This is the first one that I had planted into a bigger pot. This is Dr. Witchy's. And I showed a photo on Instagram earlier. Really excited about this. So this is supposed to be a yellow tomato. Look at this. Oh, oh my gosh, it's soft. <laughs> That's really cool. And that one's starting to change its color as well. I think it's called blushing. I don't want to like wreck it, but like it feels nice and squishy. Oh no, I think it might have been stung. All right, I'm just gonna pick it. There are little bugs coming out of it, which is not a good sign. I can see here, that looks like two little, little sting marks. So that could be from fruit fly. It could, it could definitely still get through this. This was just as much of a barrier as I could give. So I'm not gonna, unfortunately, bite straight into this, which is what I wanted to. 
but I might open it and see. Maybe I'll do the rest of the tour first. Okay, I'll leave you there. And I better tie up this bag. I'll just show you quickly what the other one looks like as well. Look at this one. That's a big one. This one's a bit manky as well. Maybe I'll bring this one in to ripen inside anyway. Look at that. That's cat facing. Isn't that funky looking? And it also split because um, it, that just means I gave it too much water too quickly. Here we go. Pretty. All these spots are at risk of rotting. So that's why you don't want the effaciated blossoms very much because um, then you can sometimes end up with not very edible fruit. This one's so pretty though. It smells good. This is a much better bottom looking tomato. That's really pretty though. So I'll leave you guys. I'll come and get you at the end. Alright, let's go back to the start. There's Mandy. Looking really good. Lots of little fruits. We'll see if um, any of them actually set properly and ripen. Then we've got Poppy, which is massive. And I think she's starting to send up flowering stems. But I haven't seen any buds yet, but she's very big. And then these are the squash. This is the white squash. And this is the green squash. And look, I didn't plant these. These are tomatoes left over from the last time I had um, the cherry tomato here, I think. I also did have another tomato in this bed, so I don't know. Um, but bonus tomatoes, I'm keeping them and I might transplant them later because I don't think I can keep them in this bed with the squash. It'll, the squash will overtake it. And there's the climbing beans. Looking good, look, I had another one grow up. And they're all sunflowers growing across there. They're kind of a little bit sporadic. So maybe I'll plant more, we'll see. What's that? It's a carrot. <laughs> Missed one. And then here, the, that's a golden midget watermelon. And same as that one. These are some shallots, some zinnias. These are the pastel mix, I think. And then we've got um, the bush beans. So that row is dragon's tongue and this row is contender. And here's my watermelon radish that's gone to seed because see these, they're the seed pods and I want it to dry out so I can collect the seeds in these pods so that I can grow more, radish, more watermelon radishes because I ran out of seeds. It's cool, some of the flowers have a pink tinge to it. It's pretty. Here's some of my blue curled scotch kale, still going great. So it's looking good. I think it might be trying to seed, but I keep pinching it off because I like cooking, like um, sauteing that, it's really good. And here's some radishes. These are just scarlet globe, They're really pretty. You can see something's been like starting to munch on the bottom of some, but we had a few the other night. I'll put you with it tomato so I don't forget you. We had some of these the other night, it was really good. Oh, I just ran into tomato. Sorry, tomato. Here's some marigold, some more zinnias. These self seeded from the um, old flower head that I left here. So they, I think, will be polar bear. So it's just beautiful white flower head. This is a milkmaid nasturtium. See it trailing? Isn't that pretty? It will just keep growing if you let it. I am going to trim it back, but I wanted to show you guys before I did that. The, one of the main reasons I'm going to trim it back is because we get redbacks and <laughs> they like to live under in that bit and so I like to be able to come in and see what I'm doing especially if I'm coming down to grab stuff from the garden at night time. Um, yeah I just like to be able to know I'm not going to be brushing against anything. And here's a zucchini. This is where I'm going to plant the other zucchini and I left the seeds up there. I'd left the seeds with Mulby, good protector of seeds. I'll just get two to 
to make sure I definitely get one growing here. So this is the other plant, but it's just dying. It's not growing anymore. So we've got two. This is a blackjack zucchini. Let's pop the two in there. Let's cover them up. And then next time I water, I'll water here. You can see over here the, uh, I was going to say zinnias. Over here the milkmaid nasturtium is starting to crowd out the growing zinnias. And it's going to be shading it a lot here. So I think I'll take this out and trim it back so that the, this space gets a lot more sunlight so that these, these things can start to grow. I still left in the massive spring onions just for funsies. I'll probably take them out soon. And the herb bed down here looks a bit dry, needs another water. And I've still got lots of parsley and the oregano looks amazing. It's so pretty, it's got like a geometric pattern kind of look to it. It's really pretty. And the pincushion flower looks really beautiful. I don't know why it looks squashed in there. It's like something keeps sitting on it and I never catch it. But, well, it's still doing okay. There's some more spring onions there. Down there, that's a little cucumber coming up. And there's supposed to be another one coming up over there, but we're still waiting. I might re-sow that if it doesn't come up soon. And that's stevia coming up. And actually, I think that is everything. Look at that, isn't it pretty? I think that's it, I think that's everything. Oh, that's cool. So that's the garden for the start of October. It's only the 2nd of October, so I did well, did better. So I'm really keen to get inside and check out this tomato and I'll save the seeds from it um, if I can. I'm just having an aura. <laughs> Come on. Just give me a sec to focus. This, I can't even really tell if you're looking at me right. Okay, yep, I'm good. Um, so, I'm gonna go inside and check out the tomatoes that we just um, picked. I'm going to open up the yellow one because I wanna try it if I can, hope there's no bugs, um, and save the seeds from that one and the other one, this one. I'll leave on the, the funky looking one, I'll leave on the counter because um, it's just really nice and warm in the house. It'll ripen it right up. Um, and yeah, and then I'll get to taste it. Now keep an eye on the close, a close eye on the other ones. So yeah, everything's starting to come back. It's so good. <laughs> Actually, it looks okay, which is good. <laughs> I'm not keen to take a big bite into it though, just in case. I think I picked it too early. There's like no seeds. There's hardly any seeds. There is very little seeds in there. Like, oh. I think I picked it too early. Mmm, that's sweet. With no bugs, which is awesome. It kind of reminds me of like, similar feeling to biting into an apricot but it still tastes like tomato. <laughs> Clearly I must have picked it too early because there, there aren't any seeds there for me to save. Mm, 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 mm. Yum.